Well, today is the day. The Rams are going to meet each other face to face for the very first time. Now, obviously, I am expecting a little bit of argy-bargy, but our new Jacobs is bigger, stronger than these two. So I'm expecting him to take, um, take the lead. If you're Patreon, head over to Patreon, by the way, because we have a poll for naming this guy. Um, so check that out after this video. Now, our new Jacob Ram has been here for a week now. He's been in this pen and he's just had hay and food and feed, but no grass, because you can see it's not really grown. So I'm also hoping that when they're turned out onto pasture, his first instinct is to eat grass. So um, we'll see if that works. They've also obviously had this line down the middle. So they've seen each other face to face. They've sniffed. Um, they've headbutted a few times through the netting. They just haven't met up in close person where they can beat each other up. And there will be some of that, I'm sure. There'll be some headbutting and some heads down. Um, but again, I'm fairly sure this chap will win. So we will release the boys and then we'll get this chap out. I'm going to distract them with a little bit of food and now I'm going to get him. We are also going to put the fencing on today. Actually, the two boys, so Capula and Montague, have been really respectful of the fencing uh, the past few weeks. And I actually have hardly had to have the electric fencing on at all. Our new boy, however, I don't know uh, how good he's going to be. So for today, the fencing is going back on. So I've already set it all up. Little click. It's running out, but it'll be enough just to uh, keep them under control. Well, as I hoped, he's straight into grass. Though I don't doubt at some point later today, there will be a ruckus, I'm sure. And this is why, guys, you should never take rams for granted. Because their skulls can withstand that. We cannot. It's quite interesting that Capulet, <laughs> who is, who I consider a runt, is the one that's really, uh, 
pushing the boundaries. But actually, having said that, it's probably because he is not dominant. Uh, Monty is top, so Capulet is trying to say, you're going to be beneath me, mate. Have you had enough, Monty? <laughs> Monty's like, yeah, fine, whatever. So while the rams are chilling and not doing a lot, we'll go and feed the ewes. And guys, there is some weird, wet things of myth and legend falling from the sky. It is raining. It is fabulous. It rained quite a lot last night as well. Um, so much so that I went to the market garden and the soil, rather than gray and dusty, was a nice, rich black color. I've never been so happy. Ah! I think Connie wants her breakfast. Ah! Hello. Where should we put it? Ah! So they have got plenty of grass and I move them every couple of days, but I'm still just giving them a few ewe nuts um, just to make sure that Connie here stays in milk for these two and just to help ease any bickering there is in the field. They don't get very much because I don't want them to get too fat, um, but at the end of this month they'll be sheared and then I can see their body condition a lot, lot better. You can see that Connie is really actually in good body condition considering she's just lambed. Often they look so hollow and anorexic afterwards, but she's stayed in good shape, which is nice. And uh, Malachi, uh, only two weeks old today, look at those little horns. They are quite incredible. But actually, looking at Ophelia, she has the very beginnings of her horns coming through as well. Just here. Hello, Mama Connie. Well, the blackthorn has been in full bloom for ages, but these leaves are just starting to come out, which is lovely. And look at the crab apple. The crab apple is really starting to get loads and loads of flowers. Well, you might wonder where all the silkies are. There's just four over there, and it's because we have got Broodiness Central. So down here, if we can get into this. They are all starting to go broody. Now, of course, normally I curse a broody hen because I want the eggs, but actually, as you know, we have no electricity up here, so we're having to brood everything in an incubator back home. If I can get loads of broody hens going, it means that I don't have to use electricity and I can use the traditional method. One thing I must remember, though, is last year we allowed all those broodies to sit on eggs in a big clutch, and then as the eggs hatched, they fought over the chicks and killed them. So this year, we are separating out our broody hens into separate little pens and cages and giving them their own set of eggs so that does not happen again. I cannot even tell you how happy I am that it is raining. Oh, it's just so nice. And it means that now it's warm and now we've got the rain. In 10 days time, maybe less, everything is just going to go whoosh. And that excites me a lot. Now it has rained, it is also time to go and pop this beautiful hazel tree in. It started off as just a tiny little sapling in a friend's garden and she dug it up. And lots of our trees in our wood are actually sent to me by you guys who have just got saplings 
you dig them up and send them and I pop them in. Um, as an aside, this down here is the only buddleia left in our white buddleia grove. It seems that this corner just gets too wet. So really, really wet winter and then sitting in water all winter and then really, really dry spring and not getting any, uh, any growth at all means we only have one buddleia left, which is a bit annoying. Um, but what I'll do is I'm gonna let this, if it survives, I'm gonna let this grow on. I'll take cuttings and um, I will improve the soil. So when I plant those buddleia, uh, next time I'll put some grit and stuff in the bottom just to help it drain away and actually I might even push a uh, ram a stake right in there as well and put the gravel on top so there's a bit of a water well underneath it um, so that water can drain into that and it's not sitting then on the roots. But this tree is going way over there somewhere so let's go and put it in. So this area is where we started our woodland and it doesn't actually that look that big when you think it's actually just the end of a field but um it's actually about 2.3 acres uh we've put in the the front line of the wood here and you can see them all going along and then quite a few of the trees um, are starting to come up as you know we had a massive drought last spring um, which is the following season after we initially pl planted a lot of these trees and we were in lockdown and we couldn't come up but many of those trees have survived like this little hawthorn that's coming on really really well and so hopefully this year we'll have warm wettish weather um, going into May and into the summer and these trees can really get a crack along but for now we're going to work out where we can put that hazel. Um, ideally I want to find somewhere where a, a number of trees have died off um, from the stakes. Um, I'll pop it there. And the other thing to remember actually is while sometimes you look in the tubes and you think oh it's totally dead, look down here. This, so this, this little hazel is completely dead. It's been, it's been, it's died off basically right down at the base. But now we have all this new growth coming up. So although that looked like a dead and a good spot for that hazel, there's actually a, a, a hawthorn already there. Um, uh, maybe we'll put it on the front line. I think this tree looks, this tree is very dead and gone. There's not a soul in there. Let me pull this off yet. This is what's left of this tree. Just this little stick, which I've just snapped off. So I think this will be a good place to pop it. The nice thing with this tree is it's a lot, lot more substantial than um, the one supplied by the Woodland Trust. So you can see it's got quite a nice root ball on it. I'm actually going to just shake some of this dirt off because it's easier. It's going to be easier to plant it. Oh, you're a lovely little tree, aren't you? You'll look very pretty there. Take this stake out. What did you find? Hey, what did you find? Oh, oh, you found a nice wing of a pheasant. Isn't that nice? You can play with that if you want. You want it? He's like, yes, I do. Give me the pheasant wing. So as with all trees, it's best to plant it in a square hole. If you plant it in a round hole, just like in a pot, the roots go round and round and round and it gets pot bound. 
plant it in a square hole. As the roots grow out, they hit a wall um, and they can't grow um, at a 90 degree angle. They won't go around that way. So they'll just push into the earth that way. I did put some sod back on top. Um, normally you would keep trees weed free because you don't want those weeds competing with the tree as it gets established. However, in this woodland area, where I'm not gonna be able to guarantee to kind of water this every single day, by putting this clay, and it's clay as well, by putting this clay um, sod and bit of grass back on top, they will sort of knit together and actually it will help maintain the moisture levels in the soil. Um, so in this instance, this is what I'm doing. If I was planting trees and stuff in the garden, I would keep it weed free all around the base until that tree was established. But um, it looks pretty nice. I'm really happy to get this in. Let's hope the deer leave it alone. They haven't done any damage in the past few weeks because they've got loads of brows now. Um, so that's another little job off the list. Well, as I expected, our new ram has taken the crown. Um, there's still a little bit of pushing and shoving going on. Let me zoom in on them. But for the most part, our new ram here is just chasing the others around now and they're running away, which shows that he has become the dominant and he's gonna do this a lot. He's gonna push up beside them and they're not really challenging anymore. So our new chap is now uh, head of the pack. Which is good because he's the older ram. You can see it's out of breath. He's, he's just trying to mount them now. And by trying to mount them shows that he's in charge. And you can see Monty's running away. Capulet's running away. They have been told. So it's good. But what Monty doesn't know, of course, is that come tupping season, he's still going to get his own ladies because our new boy is going to get his own ladies. So that he doesn't actually have to worry about being top because he's going to get to top in the autumn anyway. It's tiring work this though, you can see, <laughs> you can see he's already tired out, aren't you mate? It's tiring, challenging, becoming top. Now when it comes to shutting them away tonight, I may very well for this first night shut them back into separate pens because obviously out here there is a lot of space for them to get away from each other. In those smaller pens they're more confined. I don't want anybody, anybody getting injured. So for tonight I will probably, as I say, shut them separately. Tomorrow I'll let them out and then if there's any more argy-bargy tomorrow I'll keep shutting them separately. But I would think that they'll sort it out today. I'll put them in separate tonight and then when I let them out in the morning they'll just get on with it and from then on I think they'll be best friends and I can just leave them to it.